Welcome to part 3 of the Core 2 video tutorials. In previous videos, we've shown you some of the ways the Core 2 browser can make finding sounds easier. This tutorial will go further in-depth with the browser, showing you how you can manage search results, sound attributes, and import presets from third-party instruments. Core's browser works by searching the Core Sound database to pull only sounds that match the criteria you choose. It's able to do this because all Core sounds have specific categorical tags attached to them. Tags such as dark or percussive. These tags are called attributes in Core 2. Let's see this in action by searching for a sound. How about a bass sound? But let's be as specific as possible. Part of the power of the Core Attribute system is that it helps you get precisely what you have in mind. So I'll click on Bass. You can see that as soon as I do this, I'm presented with a sublist of bass sounds to help me narrow it down further before choosing any other attributes. In this instance, I'll choose Distorted Bass because that's what I have in mind. Now take a look at the attributes in the Mode column. You can see that there are not only tags that describe the sonic quality, but also the sound's source or synthesis type, such as sample-based or FM. This allows you to control not only what something sounds like, but the kind of synthesizer that it's likely to come from. I'm going to click on Synthetic because I know I want a real-time synthesizer and not something sampled. We also have the type of genre that the sound is likely to be used in. Let's say that I'm working on a techno track, so I'm going to choose Techno Electro. Now I've narrowed it down to only a few hits, so let's click on this one, Loomer. Notice that when I click on it without loading it, I'm shown all the attributes that are actually on this sound via checkboxes. In other words, I chose the attributes that were important to me for the project I was working on, but each sound may have many more attributes associated with it that I didn't click on. You can see that this sound, for instance, is also dark and arpeggiated. This means that there are many different ways to arrive at a given sound. It also means that you can pause for a moment and see if there are attributes associated with your sound that you don't want. I could choose not to load this sound if I, for instance, know that I don't want something arpeggiated. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and load the sound. Sure enough, it meets my selection criteria. As you might imagine, this kind of thing can save you a lot of time when you're looking for a sound but don't want to audition all the presets and all of your instruments one by one. Now, using attributes is easy, but there's also one other way to search for sounds, using the text search box. You may remember our using it in one of the previous tutorials. This is an internet-style search box, into which I can type anything relevant about the sound. For example, if I remember the exact name of a sound I was using a few days ago, I can type that name, and only that sound will appear in the search results. The really useful thing about the textual search is that whatever is typed here works in addition to the categorical search. So if I now type FM8 into the text search box, it will not only pull up sounds coming from the Native Instruments FM8 synthesizer, but it will pull up FM8 sounds with the tags I've already specified. So we've seen that each core sound can have a number of attributes associated with it. This is because each core sound has been pre-saved with these attributes. But where are these attributes coming from, and how can we change them? Tagging your own sounds is quite easy. Let's see it in action. Let's add some attributes to the sound we loaded in the previous example. I'll just click here on the Edit button. I'm then presented with a master list of Core's attributes in the left-hand pane. Here we see the bass and distorted bass attributes we used to find the bass sound a moment ago. Let's look at some other pages. How about the genre category? We can see the techno-electro category we chose earlier. 
but I can see such a distorted bass sound being used equally well in industrial music, so let's click on the industrial genre attribute. The industrial attribute has just been added to the sound. Easy. Let's add a few more. I'll click on timbre. Let's say I disagree with the dark attribute that is currently on the sound, so I'm going to change it to bright. Now I've changed an attribute for an existing factory sound. You're of course free to do this whenever you like. Remember that the purpose of the browser is to help you find things, and you should therefore categorize your sounds in the way you see fit. Great. Take a look at the information in the right hand pane here. You can see a series of text fields into which you can freely type whatever you like. The great news about these fields is that they are searchable. Remember the internet style text search box we used just a moment ago? Well, the text search box not only searches the attributes for a given sound, but also the contents of these text fields. This would allow you to search for all sounds by a given author, for example, or anything you type into the comments field. From here we'll click Save, and our sound now has additional attributes that will be reflected the next time we're looking for a sound using the Core 2 browser. We just saw how easy it is to add or change the attributes associated with core sounds. We've gone to great lengths to ensure that there are as many attributes as possible to choose from, but you can probably imagine creating your own attribute names to reflect your unique style of working. Fortunately, Core 2 makes this extremely easy. Let's return to the sound used in the previous example. We'll once again click Edit to bring up the Attribute page. Creating your own attributes begins by clicking on the User label. The first thing Core 2 will want to know is the category our custom attributes will belong to. This category name corresponds to the column header in the browser such as the genre category in the example we saw earlier. Genre was the column header. And then within that category, we had choices such as techno, rock, and so forth. So let's say we want to create a category to keep track of the effects used on various core sounds. So I'll type effects used as our new category. Now, if I click on the effects used category, I can add the attributes that will be part of this category. I'll add a few effects likely to be used by a given instrument. Chorus, reverb, and delay. We're done. We've just created a new category and its associated attributes. Now all we need to do is add the column to the core browser. So I'll cancel out of saving this sound, and now I can add our new column anywhere in the Core 2 browser that I wish. How about here? I need only right click and choose our new category from the menu. There they are. Our new attributes will behave exactly like the factory attributes, and we can add them to any sound we wish, and they will be saved accordingly. As you've probably noticed, Core 2 comes with a lot of great sounds on board. Plus, if you own Complete 5 or any native instrument synthesizer, all the presets have been saved as core sounds and tagged with appropriate attributes. Since Core 2 is capable of loading any VST or Audio Units plugin, however, you may want to import all the presets from a third party instrument so that they show up in the Core 2 browser. As you might guess, this is really easy to do. Here we have the sound matrix, as explained in the second core video tutorial. I'm going to add the freeware instrument called Iblet into the first sound channel. Iblet has 64 presets, and since they are not already available in the core browser, I'm going to import them. This is simply a matter of right clicking on the Iblet slot and choosing Import Plugin Presets. Core will then ask me where I would like to save all the imported core sounds and then it will extract all the presets from the third-party instrument. You'll notice that when it's finished, we're presented with the Attributes page. This is because Core is giving us the opportunity to batch tag all of the Iblet presets. In other words, assign the same attribute to all the newly imported presets in one go. 
Imagine you're working with a sampled piano instrument. You could, for example, assign a tag of piano, keys, and sample-based to all of the presets. We hope you found this tutorial useful. Be sure to check out the remaining tutorials to find out how to use CoreLive and in a sequencing host.